I want just to talk for a little bit and hopefully encourage and, and build us up in the fact that, you know, of course, what we are celebrating today, we get to, of course, go eat lots of food with our family and, and spend time together, but, but hopefully don't race through today and, and come to church and then rush out to food and, and spend time with family and, and forget that the reason that, that we are celebrating today is because Christ, he went to the cross for us. He not only went to the cross and was in the grave, but he was raised again for us so that we could have life in him. And, and so today, hopefully you'll be encouraged and we can walk forward every single day of our lives past this day, which not saying you haven't for the past while that you've been living, but, but with strength and with the power of God walking with you and in you and, and walking that. Amen? Amen. So, in Romans 4.25, it says, who was delivered up, Jesus? It's not asking a question. It was just continuing on from the previous scripture, scripture. So, Jesus was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification. And it's saying this, what it's telling us is, is that he was sent to the cross because of our sins. Our sins brought him to the cross. He went to the cross. God's allowed. I, I don't know about you, but I'm always amazed that he allowed his son to go to the cross to suffer so that we can be brought back into his family, so that we can be brought back to him, so that the sins that, that we've committed and you know, whether you think you've committed sins or not, we're, we're sinful by nature. And, and that's what happened in Genesis, that we're all born into sin. And, and that's a bummer, but, but, the, but the deal is, is that Christ went to the cross. And not only that, what the scripture says is he was raised because of our justification. So, he went to the cross because of our sins, but it didn't stop there. It's not like, I'm going to take care of your sins, but I'm also going to finish the work, and you are going to be justified in front of God, that whenever God looks at you, he doesn't see you or your past or what's happened, but he sees Jesus standing there, seeing a sinful, not seeing a sinful person, but seeing a sinless Jesus. That we can't be righteous, but, but he's righteous, and he stands with us, and that's what we're celebrating today. So the implications of, of Easter for us are, are staggering. They're, they're amazing, and if we understand this and what has happened with the work of Christ on the cross, that, that we don't just get to be a part of God's family, but we get to walk with him, and we get to receive his spirit and walk in the power of who he is. So we don't just get, get life, but what the scripture says, we get more abundant. He came so that we could have life, but not just life, but abundant life. We can have joy. We can have hope because of him. We, we can walk in the power of who he is. The spirit of God is with us and moves in us and through us. It's not just life. It's abundant life. It's everything that we need. If we can allow him, if we give him the rightful place, his rightful place in our lives, then something amazing happens. Life comes to this mortal body. This sinful nature is covered up by the blood of Christ. And we become part of his family and we are made new. In Romans 8, 11, it says, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. 
See, it says the, your mortal body. Our bodies are mortal. What does that mean? It means, I think you probably already know, but it means that, that we're born, and for a little while we're growing, and everything's being made new, but then all of a sudden it just starts decaying and dying. These bodies are frail and, and feeble, even as young whippersnappers that are, I didn't say that, did I, Grandma? I said whippersnappers. I got that from her. You know, as young kids, you know, we can be strong, we can work out, we can be taking care of ourselves, eating healthy, but we're still on the path to decay. And, and, and that moment where our body is, is not going to be able to live anymore. But the great thing is that the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the grave, from the dead, that he can dwell in you. He can dwell in you, and just like, I don't know about you, but to me, that just like, it blows my mind. The same spirit that, that rose Christ from the grave can be with me and give life to this mortal body. We look at this moment in history in Jesus, God, coming and doing this work on the cross. And we're like, oh, it's like the most amazing moment in history, because it is. But do we realize that that same spirit is also going to dwell in us if we ask him to be a part of our lives? If we ask him to come and be the Lord of our lives? What does that mean? It means that, that we stop trying to control our own situation, our own lives. We stop holding on to it ourselves and allow God to come and be a part of our lives so that he can help us in it. Anybody want help? I do. But so many times we don't give it up, you know? We do, we're like, well, I can take care of myself and we realize that we most of the time can't. I mean, there's things that we can do on our own, but God wants to walk with us. He wants us to walk with his spirit inside of us. And that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead can walk with us, help us to live our lives abundantly as we walk with him. It's sin that's killing our bodies. But the great news is that Christ went to the cross so that our bodies could be made new so that our spirits can be made new, so that our sins and that shame and all that stuff, and it doesn't matter, you think like, oh my goodness, you don't even know what my past is. You don't even know what I've done. I may not, but God does, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it's not like, oh, well, this amount of bad stuff in your life is okay, but this isn't. That's not who God is. God loved the world so much that he gave his son, not the ones that were good enough, but because you are his creation, he created you to live with him and to know him, and he wanted you to walk with him, and that's why, that's it. He wanted you, no matter who you are. Ephesians 1, 19 says, I also pray that you'll understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. And I see through these scriptures that it's like they're trying to get something through our thick skulls. It's, it's like, can you understand who God is? Can you understand what he's done for you on the cross, who he is, and that you can, can walk with the spirit of God in you? I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. The same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. That same one. It's telling us again. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. That one. That great power of God. If you believe in him, can be with you, can change you. If you allow him that place in your life that, that there's something that happens, that there's a change, 
that, that we can walk not in our own strength, but in his, that we can walk not in our feeble mortal bodies, but with him, with his spirit inside of us. See, being a Christian is, is all about being led by the spirit and allowing the spirit of God to work in us. I mean, Christ did this amazing work on the cross, and, and we like, oh my goodness, so I can be saved, I can know him, and I can have this relationship with God. But sometimes I feel like we kind of forget that, that it wasn't just for that moment. He doesn't want us to have that moment and then walk on with just life. I just have life. God saved me, and I'm right with him, and now I have a relationship with him, but i you know, just live in life. And that's not what happened. That's not the, the fullness of the work of the cross. Because yes, he saved you, but he saved you and put his spirit in you to bring life to your mortal body, to bring everything that he has, his hope, his righteousness, his grace, all these different things, the power that is in him, is in you, all those things inside of you. So how could we just have life? But we can walk, we should walk with abundant life, moving with his spirit, seeing him move in our lives. Say, I don't know, I mean, maybe you, pastor, or some of these other guys over here, they might be able to do it. These other ladies over here, you know, they might be the, no, every single one of us. There's not just great things or something to do for certain people. It's for every single one of us. Looks different, but every single one of us are brought into the family of God and have something amazing that he's calling us to do. In Romans 8, starting verse 13, it says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. So we're talking about this being led by the Spirit. So Christ did this work on the cross, but we have to understand that we need to get up. And I mean, Christ did everything on the cross. And he wants to help us and be there with us to, to, to see our lives come to fruition of all that he's called us to do and, and to be. But, but as I see here, it says, if you live according to the flesh, but if the Spirit Spirit, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. There's something that we need to do, and that's to walk away, to put to death those sinful things, that nature. If you walk according to the flesh, see, there's a change that needs to happen, an action in us. And that's to stop walking according to the flesh, but walk in the spirit. To turn away from that stuff that we used to be a part of, or hang around, or do, or whatever, and turn toward the spirit of God and say, God, I'm going to walk with you, and I'm going to allow you to do this work in my life. And not just this one moment, but every single day when I wake up, God, renew that life-giving power in me. Allow me to step out of bed and be stronger and more full of you than I was the day before. It's a life, an everyday walking with God and allowing him to work in you. He wants to give life to our mortal bodies. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. It says, be led by the Spirit. You weren't redeemed and saved and brought into the family of God to go back to that stuff. You were brought into the family of God to walk with him and allow him to be a part of your life. And that's what he wants. That's what we are here today to, to celebrate and to worship and, and to learn and, 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 and to eat food about. We all like to eat food, right? 
But why are we celebrating today? It's because Christ died on the cross. Not just for that singular moment of you coming into relationship with him, but for every single day of your life to be able to walk forward in who he is. That he can give life to your mortal body. John 6, 36, it says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit. And they are life. And Jesus is telling us here, he's saying, look, you have to understand that these bodies, these frail mortal bodies, this, this sinful nature, it's not the real thing. And he says, I'm speaking in the spirit, in the spiritual realm to you, because you have to understand that that's the real deal. There's this book by C.S. Lewis, The Great Divorce, where, I mean, he's a great storyteller, but it, it's this great picture that, that, he, that he lays out for, for us, that, that there's these people, and they're on earth, and they get picked up by this bus, and they're taken on this bus, and they end up in heaven. And, you know, just like us, they feel real, like, this is, this is the real deal. What else is there? I mean, I mean, there's nothing more real than this. But then they step off in this, what is the picture of heaven? They step off this bus, and when they step out of this bus, these bodies, these hands that, that used to seem so real, when they step out, they step out onto the grass, and the grass is so green, it's greener than, than, than anything they've ever seen, and they step out onto the grass, and the great blades of grass don't even bend. And they look out and they, and they hear something. There's a roar of the rivers that are so loud. And all of a sudden they realize that the bodies that they felt like were so real before are now just a ghostly little picture that they can see through. Because what is reality is the spirit. And that's what he's given us this picture of. What's real, what's true is the spirit. Yeah. And when Jesus is speaking, he's, he's saying, hey, look, I'm, I'm telling you something. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. He's saying, your body may seem real and everything that's going on around you may seem real and seem like the most important thing, but he's telling us the most important thing is your spirit, that that's the real deal. And then when, he talk, when he's talking about giving life to us, giving life to our mortal bodies, this is, this is saying not just that we can walk in his strength and in his life throughout these days, but, but the reality is that, is that when this body doesn't live any longer, that we will be able to live with him for eternity in heaven after that. And that's the real prize. Not just getting up tomorrow being like this, awesome dude because Christ is with you, which is awesome, and we should walk that way. But the real prize is being able to spend eternity with him. That's the most important thing. All these things that we walk through every day, the good, the bad, all this stuff, they're, they're kind of important. But when weighed against eternity and our spirit and the life of God and who we are with him. They're nothing. He's everything. The spirit of God is a source of life where the spirit of God dwells. There is life. That's what Christ came to do, to bring life to these bodies, to bring his spirit to be with us so that we could walk not in our own free will, but to walk with him, to not walk in our own strength. Because I don't know about you, sometimes I think I'm strong, but then something comes along and I realize I'm not that strong. And I'm like, God, you got to help me. But you know what the great thing is, is that when we ask him into our lives, when we ask him to be a part of our lives, that he's there. His spirit dwells in us. Amen? That's what he did on the cross. 
1 Peter 2, 24 says, who, who himself, this is Jesus, bore our sins in his own body on that tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. He bore our sins so that we can die to that sinful nature and then turn around and live for righteousness, to live for him, to follow him. And it says, I love this picture. I don't know about you. I love things that are put out in, in, in like pictures. It says we were like sheep that were gone away from the shepherd. You know sheep are pretty vulnerable when they're away from the shepherd. It's the same with us. We're vulnerable. We don't have what we need. We can't protect ourselves from all this stuff. Even if we are strong or we have a good mental capacity, you know, I'm not going to let this bring me down. We don't have it all together enough to make it through this life. But that's not even the most important part. The most important part is the rest of eternity with God. And he'll give us abundant life here and we get to spend eternity with him. Amen? Will you stand with me?